I'm sharing on how to prevent Satan from robbing you of your blessings. How to prevent Satan from robbing you of your blessings. Hallelujah. Yeah, you don't want Satan to rob you. Yeah. You don't want Satan to rob you. You know, Satan has been defeated. And I've shared on that extensively in the last few weeks. And I want to show, some, show you some of the things that you could do to allow him to have a legal access to you. Do you see? Yes. If you read in 2 Corinthians chapter, 12, chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible mentions how that we don't want Satan to get an advantage of us. Paul was talking to the Corinthian church, and he says that, lest Satan should have an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. You see, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Satan should not get an advantage of us. You see, look at, look at the message version. After all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We are not oblivious of his sly ways. You see, you don't want to give him an opening for him to become, to, to, to display his mischief and his deception. Hallelujah. You don't want to do that. You know, the word gets an advantage of us is the, the Greek word pleonectio. Pleonectio. <laughs> P-L-E-O-N-E-K-T-E-O. Pleonectio. P-L-E-O-N-E-K-T-E-O. And it means to cheat out of. Can you imagine? It means what? To cheat out of. And it means to rob. To rob you. So Satan doesn't have any power. Now he's a thief. He's been reduced to the, to the level of a thief. He's been reduced to the level of... Uh, 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 what was it called? A, a deceiver. Yeah. Someone who is into cheating you. He wants to cheat you. A scammer. He's been reduced to the level of a scammer. Just to scam you of your, out of your blessings. That's why in John 10, 10, Jesus said that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it to the full. Have it abundantly. You see, he, he, he has a role of trying to steal I can't steal something from you that you don't have. I can only steal what you have. You see, uh -huh. tell me about Satan can only steal what you have. He can't steal what you don't have. But he tries to steal your joy because you have joy. He tries to steal your prosperity because you have prosperity. He tries to steal your health because you have health. He tries to steal your peace because you have peace. Do you get it? In Christ, all these things are given to us. All these nice things are given to us. You see, the Bible says that we now have peace with God. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 30, uh, 33. Look at John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. That in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You see, let's read the Amplified. The Amplified is nicer. Jesus said in there, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. Eh? I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. What a blessing. This is what Jesus has deprived the, 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 the world power to take away you know, your peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we still have Christians who are not enjoying peace. They don't have peace of mind. They are depressed about one thing or the other. They are not happy about one thing or the other. They've lost their joy. Why? Because the devil has stolen it from them. So don't let the devil steal from you. you see? So I want to help you understand some of the things you could do that could let him steal your joy from you. Some of the things that you could do for him to have access to you. Okay. Is it a good uh, 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 topic to preach? Yeah. Look at Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. This is, the, this is the situation of a lot of Christians. It says, but this is the people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes 
and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none deliver it. For a spoil, and none say it, restore. Have you seen it? He says that these people are robbed and spoiled. The word spoiled means to strip off your, your armory. Yeah. Robbed, spoiled, and they are, in, they are snared in holes, or they are captives in holes. Holes of poverty. Holes of sickness. Holes of depression. Holes of uh, 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 failure. Holes of confusion. Holes of poverty. What other hole is there in the world? Holes of fear. Holes of addictions. He says, Nancy had restore. Nancy had restore. God doesn't want you to be trapped by the devil. Because you have power over him. You have authority over him. So it shouldn't be a, a, a problem at all. Do you see? Look at Isaiah chapter 49. Verse 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to 24. So we don't read too much. He says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful de- captive delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Go back and let's read the, the New King James so that we can understand. New King James. Shall the prey, the prey be taken from the mighty? Remember, he says that some people are kept in holes, they are, they, are, they are spoiled, they are robbed, and all of that. Those are the group he's talking. He says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the captives of the righteous be delivered. You see, in these verses, the Bible is talking about, he's, talking, he's actually referring to Satan. And he says, but that says the Lord, even the castle of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I'll contend with him that contends with you, and I'll save your children. You see, he says, I'll contend with the devil for you, and I'll save your children. But then he, go, if you go back, you notice that says that he calls the devil righteous, and he calls him Mighty, shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Hey. Hey. Or the captives of the righteous, but he's calling him righteous. Isn't it not wild? Yeah. But we all know that the devil is not righteous. Yeah. The Bible says that the devil is a liar and he's the father of lies. He cannot be righteous, he cannot be mighty, but he is mighty out there in the world. You see, he's called the God of this world. Oh, yeah the prince of the power of this world, of the air. He's also called the one who, the God of this world, who blinds the minds of those who don't believe. So outside of Christ, he is very, he's very powerful because he exercises authority and power over people who are not born again. So outside of Christ, he's powerful, but in Christ, he's not. You see, when you come into Christ, I've told you already, you are given power. Jesus said in, John, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Can you see it? He says, behold, I give you authority. You see, authority is bigger than power. The word authority here is exousia. And power, the power of the enemy is dunamis. That, that means the ability of the enemy, the ability of the devil, the abilities of the devil. Authority is better and higher than power or inherent ability. You see, if, you, if a policeman stands in front of a car, no matter how big the car, it can be an 18 wheeler, the car has a lot of power. It can just run him over, isn't it? And kill him in a second. The car has a lot of power. You see, it's faster than the policeman. The policeman can't even chase the car if the car should pass. But because of the policeman's shirt, what he's wearing, the badge that is in his shirt, He is backed by something that is bigger than the car. There's a throne. The government throne is behind him. He has the seat of government is behind him. He has so much power, he can put you in prison. So when he lifts his hand, and you are conscious of it, so when, no matter the car, you can be driving uh, what? Unexpected. We saw saw a Maybach recently, just yesterday or two days ago. Very beautiful car. It's nice. (laughs) Tell you about it's nice. It's very nice. All those who don't like prosperity, there's something wrong with you. You should they should like nice things. Hey. 
You don't like nice things. Ask me, but you like nice things. You should like nice things. No matter the car you are driving, hey, when the policeman, the policeman may not have money like you do. He may not, whatever, he doesn't have, maybe he's coming to even collect some, something from you. Something for the, but, but it doesn't matter. He has a shirt that has authority in it. So when Abai is behind him, the government is behind when he lifts his hand, no matter who you are, you have to stop. That is the authority we have in the spirit. Are you getting it? So you, the policeman doesn't need to have muscles. He doesn't need muscles, a V chest, whatever. Listen, the guy can be very slim, short. His chest is bigger than him. His head is bigger than the cap. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. He has a shirt. Brother, you have to stop. Are you in the church? In the still in the spirit, no matter your level, you may know the seven dimensions of the power of God or not. Makes no difference. Listen, in the spirit, you have authority against the powers of the devil, against principalities, against powers. When you lift your hand and say, hey, it's okay, they have to obey you. Why? Because God is backing you. The throne of God is backing you. I'm going home. I don't think you are interested in what I'm saying. The way you are quiet, I was wondering what was going on. The throne of God is backing you. Have you heard the song? I walk with God the Father, walk with God the Son, I walk with God the Spirit. Three of them, I I get get back in the Sing it, sister. I know the walk alone. I know the walk alone. This is Cantata. Let's sing Let's sing it. I walk with God the Father. I walk with God the Father. I walk with God the Son. I walk with God the Spirit. Three of them joy, and I get back in the
So you have to walk with that con- I have backing. Yeah, yeah, the devil is not, can't do anything. When it comes to you as a child of God, he doesn't have any. Yeah. Nothing. The Bible says you should cast him out. Ekbalo. Yes, Ekbalo. Out. You pass. You pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. Instead of walking around as a child of God, you are full of fears. I don't know. You're always conscious about what the devil is doing and how you need to sort it out by some mixtures and by some prophecy and by some something. Hey. You will go on a very long journey, I tell you. You will never finish. And the devil will give you evidences of his power. Like, I'm around. You will deceive, you'll be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be surprised. <laughs> so don't give him that power in your life. All authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto Jesus. And when Jesus received that authority, he passed it over to the church. So we are in charge. Tell me about I am in charge. I am in charge. I am in charge. Hallelujah. Can you give Jesus a big shout? Well, the devil is not a factor in your life. Hallelujah. So you shouldn't allow him to get advantage of you, okay? So he doesn't have. We have authority over him. Yes, and authority is better than, than, than do not. Can you imagine? Authority is better than ability. Oh, yeah, it's far better. You have backing. He doesn't have backing. You see, and, and in these in this verses, let's look at the King James Version. You'll be surprised. He says that, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Serpents are, are symbols of demonic power. Scorpions are, are symbols of demonic power, devilish powers. And over all, not some, all. not some, all. emphasis on all, all the ability of the devil. So there's nothing special in your family. Do you understand? That is bigger or greater than the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus nailed him to the cross. All principalities and powers were nailed helplessly. They've been defeated. So please, don't, don't say that your case is special. All and over all the power of the enemy. All the power of the enemy. All the abilities of the devil. Then he says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, the word any is ume. The, the word means is also ume. So it's ume ume. I tell, and guess what? Ume means, ume means never, ever, ever, by any chance, in any way, at any time, at any place, in any location, hurt you. Yeah. Ume ume, I tell you. Yeah. It's, a, it's a double negative. It's a double negative in the, in the, in the Greek. It means that it, can, it is not even possible. Can you imagine? Ume ume. <laughs> by any means. Not by any means. Even when you are asleep, it can happen. Hallelujah. So believe it, okay? So he doesn't have any power over you. He's described as mighty, but not over God's children. Do you see? Hmm. Why is he described as mighty? You see, and why, why is it that even after all these verses, you still have some Christians getting hurt by, by things of the devil? You know, someone can curse someone and then you see that it has worked in the person's life. Yeah, it's there. Is it not there? We are in Ghana, in, we are in Africa. It happens. Someone will say something, whatever, and then you see that it has happened to the person. Yeah. Yeah, there are spells. Yes. There are, there are things that people say. And then it was like it's working in some people's lives. How come? How? Because the Bible says that we have power. We have authority. Do you see? Uh-huh. So I want to show you how the devil is able to become mighty in some Christians' lives. Even though it's not, it's, it's not legal. And he becomes righteous. You see, the, the devil is a lawyer. According to First Peter chapter 3. Eh, verse, verse, uh, verse 9. Look at First Peter 3, 9. Go to 7, sorry. First Peter 3, 7. Hey, am I saying the right thing? I'm not saying the right thing. 
It's 5 8, sorry. 1 Peter 5 8. He says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You see, he, if he couldn't devour, okay, he wouldn't be walking around. He says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Then he shows you what to do. Whom resist thou steadfast in the faith? Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see, he's walking around. As a, he's, not a, he's not a lion. There's no lion that roars up, uh, uh, over its prey. It doesn't work. They come in a sealed mold, rather, not roaring. Why does he roar when he's coming? He's not a lion. He's pretending to be a lion. Eh? as a, a roaring lion. He's, he's pretending. He's not. He's roaring to put fear in you. That's what he's doing. If he can put fear in you, then he has a legal basis to get into your life. Are you getting it? So he says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the, the word adversary is antidukos. Antiduku. Antidukos. <laughs> uh, A-N-T-I-D-I-K-O-S. Antidikos. A-I-A-N-T-I, anti, dikos, D-I-K-O-S. And it means a prosecuting attorney, a prosecuting lawyer who vehemently opposes the accused. Okay, a prosecuting what? Lawyer who vehemently opposes the accused. So Satan is a lawyer. According to this verse, Satan is a lawyer. And he's a lawyer who is actually against your right standing with God, your righteousness. The word antidikos is from the word uh, uh, um, dikia, okay? Um, it's, it's righteousness along the lines of rightness. So he's against your rightness before God. Your righteousness against, before God. He wants to remove your feet of righteousness so that he can have access to you. He's against, he's trying to destroy your right standing with God, and make you think differently from how you're supposed to think. That's what, that's what he does now. Okay? A prosecuting attorney or lawyer who vehemently opposes the accused. Vehemently. But amazingly, we also have, we have two lawyers. We also have two lawyers. That's a lawyer against us, and we have two lawyers who are for us. The first lawyer is Jesus Christ. First John chapter 2, verse 1. I don't know if you like this lawyer. <laughs> My little children, these things write unto you that you say not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate. The word advocate is parakletos, and it means a lawyer. It means an ad- someone who is called to speak on your behalf. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ the So Jesus is our lawyer in heaven. We have a lawyer in heaven, and we have a lawyer on earth. So that we'll never lose any case. Oh, yes. Say, I'll never lose any case. Oh. Because the devil brings cases against us. He brings cases against us. He doesn't have any power. What he has is that he's a lawyer. He's been a lawyer since. You see, because, you remember, he was one of the cherubims of God. And the cherubs or the cherubims are the ones who protected and defended God's throne. God's administration. And God's tr- throne is built on righteousness and justice. And judgment. You see, if you go against what God has said, you need to be judged. When Adam and Eve sinned, what happened? They were judged. And the Bible says there were two cherubims cherubims that were sent to come and protect the the garden and prevent them from entering. The cherubims are the ones who enforce God's um, 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 throne, God's righteousness and justice and judgment. They enforce it. They make sure that, hey, it is done. When the blood is put, you see that the, the Ark of Covenant has two cherubims sitting on top of the, the lid. And they are looking down into the Ark, down to the lid. They check if the blood that has been put there is okay for Israel to be forgiven for a year or for their sins to be covered for a year. I don't know if you get it. Yeah. And Lucifer was one of them. Lucifer used to be one of them. They were three, they were, two, they were, they were more than two, they were three. He was one of them. And then he lost his place. How are thou falling? Oh, Lucifer. Thou who was the anointed cherub. Eh? Can you show it to us? Isaiah chapter 12, verse 14. He used to be the, the anointed cherub, and he had that particular place. Okay? How are thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. How are thou cut down to the ground? Which this weaken the nations? Next verse. But thou said in your heart, that, no, it's Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 28, right? 
verse, verse 14. Look at Ezekiel 28, verse 14. He says, Thou art the anointed what cherub that covereth. And he was talking about Satan. And I've said this so. God made him like that. And he lost it. But he still tries to enforce God's laws and God's commandment. That's what he has been doing since. So he goes to and fro, checking to see who has missed it, so that he can bring a case against that person. I don't know if you get it. And when he wins a case, he becomes righteous. He becomes right. Because he's bringing legal things against you. Ah, the guy did this, he did that. This is what is supposed to happen. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He brings accusations to God concerning you. Eh? Yeah, but we have a lawyer. We have, Jesus is our lawyer, and Jesus speaks on our behalf. Apart from Jesus being our lawyer, the Holy Spirit is also our lawyer. Here with us, in John chapter 14, verse 16. Look at John 14, 16. Jesus says, And I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Let's read the Amplified so we see what he's talking about. The word comforter has to do with an advocate. You see, he says, And I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, another counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate. The word advocate is, the, the French word for lawyer is avocat. Is it true? Where are the French people? You are here. Pastor, you are not part. Is it, what's the, what's the word for, French word for lawyer? Avocat. It's not avocado. Hey. <laughs> avocat. <laughs> Who is that? It means advocate. A lawyer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have a lawyer in heaven. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have a lawyer here on earth. That's the Holy Spirit. Who are here to help us. To win every case that the devil brings against us. Every case. Every case. Every case. <laughs> you see, but you should make sure you are, not, you are not in a place where you can be accused. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when does Satan become right or become righteous? You see, he says he's, a, he's mighty and then he's righteous. We, but we know that he's not mighty, actually. We know that he cannot be righteous. You see, he's using legal terms. These are legal terms that is, the Bible is using. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Look at Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon... Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Have you seen it? He says, Satan has what? Desired. The word desired is the word excite you, my. my. Excite you, my. E X A I T. I'm, I'm intentionally using the Greek word so that you can understand what's going on. Okay? Excite you, my. Excite you, my is spelled E X. X for xylophone. A I T E O M A I. E X A I T E O M A I. Okay? And it means to ask on legal basis. To ask on what? To ask on legal basis. To ask on legal basis. So you can read this like this Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has asked for you on legal basis that he may sift you as wheat. He has asked for you on legal basis, legal grounds. You see, the devil gets an advantage of you when you violate certain legal principles in the spirit. When you violate certain legal principles in the spirit, then he can have access and then do what he wants to do. How many of you are in the church? Yeah, yeah. What did Peter do? Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse, verse 32. It says, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see, Jesus didn't say, I pray that the problem will not come. Because Peter had, he was already failing. Peter was already failing. So Jesus could, Jesus' hands were tied. So Jesus didn't pray that the problem will not come. He said, I prayed that your faith will not fail. After the problem, your faith will not fail. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. We can do things that can tie our lawyer's hands. When you are in a law court and you are supposed to be quiet and you are talking, and your lawyer can't say much. You are, you are talking. You are, I'm guilty. You are there. Your, your lawyer is saying that he's not guilty. You are saying, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Yeah. Crucify me. I'm guilty. <laughs> what do you think will happen? You'll be crucified. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Look at what, look at what Peter, Peter did. Look at the next verse. And Peter said, he said unto him, Lord, Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. What do you think he's exhibiting here? He's exhibiting pride. He's talking, for him, he's talking for himself. Instead of keeping quiet, he's talking. 
me. I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. When the time came for him to choose the Lord, what happened? Fear, fear gripped him. So he was walking, he walked in pride in this particular case, which gives a double legal right. I'm going to talk about it. And then when the time came for him to choose God, he chose, he didn't choose, he, he was afraid. Fear is also another legal means by which the devil can have an access to you. Are you in the church you have gone home? Do you like my message? He said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Next verse, verse 34. And Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day. Before you shall thrice deny me, that thou deny that thou knowest me. Before the cock crows twice, you, you deny me. Eh? You deny me. Before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. You see, and he, he's still defending himself. You see, after Jesus has said this, that before the cock crows, you will deny me. He should have rather gone home. He should have gone home, locked the key, and through the key, he should have given the key to his wife to take it to the next, the next village. Or what do you think? Because Jesus has spoken, God has spoken to you that before the day ends, before morning, before the cock says, go, 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 you would have denied me three times. But the guy did not lock himself in the room. Oh, this, he was still moving around. He even followed when Jesus was arrested. He followed all the way to the, to the temple, whatever. Hey, them guy. He was walking in so much pride, even Jesus could not help him. Hallelujah. So these are things, some of, some of the things that give the devil legal rights to you. Okay? So let's pick, let's pick some of them one by one and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue. So Satan gets a right to you. Satan becomes right or righteous, okay, in condemning or saying something about you eh, and having access to you when you violate some legal things. Okay? Hmm. So the first thing I want us to talk about, the first law that you must live by or walk by in order for Satan not to have an advantage of you or in order for Satan not to rob you, eh, we are preaching on how to prevent Satan from robbing you of your blessings. So what do I do to prevent Satan from robbing me of my blessings? Number one, walk in love. Walk and live in love. You see, the, the case of love is very important. You may think that it's not important, but it's very, very important. Okay? Don't be a Christian who doesn't like Christians. Yeah. A Christian who doesn't like Christians. Who do you like? You are creating an opportunity for the devil to accuse you. And for him to have a right over you. And for him to spoil you. For him to rob you. For him to, to keep you as a prisoner. When you, even though you are a child of God. And have authority over him. And have power over him. Are you in the church? We are here. Look at John chapter 13, verse 34. These are Jesus' words. Jesus says that, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Then he says, By this, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. So love, my loving you and you loving me is a proof that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. That's what proves to the world that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. My hating you and you hating me is what to prove that we are not of Jesus Christ. I'm not the one saying it. Can you put the two together? 34, 35. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. How did Jesus love us? He loved us to the point that he gave his life. So you should love me to the point that you give your life to me, for me. And I should love you to the point that I'll give my life for you. Ask your neighbor, will you die for me? Your neighbor is asking you back. That will you there. He's not giving you a reply. <laughs> you know, even die for yourself. <laughs> By this shall all men know. You see, when we have love, eh? We have love for one another. Like we like each other. We are ready to forgive. We are ready to not have bitterness, hold some bitterness in our hearts. Someone did something to you. And that's it. You are ball up. You are, you are so angry. You, you, can't, you can't even relate. You can't smile. You can't talk. When we say hello, you say, mm-hmm. 
What, what do they say? These church people. As though you are not part of the church. Fear church people. Fear church people. Are you not in church? Why, why are you saying that they should fear church people? I don't know why, whether this is what they are listening to me. Are you listening to me or are you not listening to me? <laughs> Look at John chapter 15. Let me give you more scriptures. Sit down for two minutes. John 15, 12. Look at Jesus. This is Jesus. Jesus says, this is my commandment. Is Jesus God? Is Jesus God? Jesus is God. He, God is giving us. He says, this is my commandment. This is, what, this is what I'm saying. That you love one another. As I have loved you. It's repeating the same thing. Love one another as I have loved you. Look at the next verse. Greater love has no man than this, than that a man laid down his life for his friends. A man laid down his life for his friends. Next verse. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So when you do what I'm commanding you to, what is he commanding us to do? What is he commanding us to do, my brother? To love one another. You are my friends if you do what... You do whatsoever I command you. What is he commanding us? He says, love. Love one another. Love one another. Tell your about, love me. Don't be offended at me. Don't be angry with me. Don't keep bitterness about me in your heart. Some people are afraid of their neighbors. They are not telling anything. They are not saying anything to their neighbors. Right now, as we are talking to our neighbor, our neighbor is becoming offended as we are talking. Like, why are you talking to me? Why are you saying this to me? Why are you saying that to me? Hey, hey. this one to you are angry. What kind of churches are when you go? They don't let you have. They don't let you have peace, and they will let you be talking to your neighbor all the time. Oh, tell your neighbor, sorry for left, sorry for left, sorry for left. <laughs> Hallelujah. But on a more serious note, walking in love instead of unforgiveness and bitterness is the way of keeping the devil away from you. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's the major way of keeping the devil very far away from you. Yeah. Walking in love. Walking and living in love instead of unforgiveness and bitterness. Payback. They say bitterness... And unforgiveness is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. Look at, look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. 1 John 4, 20. You cannot say you love God. If a man say, I love God, you say you love God, you are worshipping. I love you, Lord. And you'll be crying. And it's over. I get back, you know. I get back, you know. You get back, but you are, you are angry with your brother. As you are saying, I get back in. You, know, you are thinking about someone that he's the one who is who is against you. But you get back in. But he has asked him back in. Oh, <laughs> if a man say I love God and hated his brother, these are very strong words. He hates his brother. He is a liar. He is, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? How can you love God whom you have not seen? God is in your brother. God is in your sister. So the church is the last place to pick an offense. You shouldn't pick offense here. You shouldn't pick offense. You shouldn't become bitter in the house of God. It's not a good thing at all. You give the devil a place in your life and in the life of the group that you are in. Yeah. The devil can do whatever he wants to do because you are offended, because you are, you are angry about one thing or the other, because you are, you are holding some bitterness in your heart. Yeah. yeah. It's wild. Yeah, I'm coming there. Eh? So go to the next verse. It says, and this commandment have, have we from God, from him, that he who loveth God, loveth his brother also. The one who loves God loves his brother also. You see, because, eh, because, the body of Christ eh, is the head. It's made up of the head and the body. Jesus is the head. You can't be in love with the head and not be in love with the body. It's not, it's not possible. You can't be in love with the head and not be in love with the body. I can't say I love your head. Just the head. What are you talking about? Just the head. Just the head. What is this? Just the head. 
It has to be the whole, you love you love the whole person. That's why you cannot say I love God. But when it comes to Sister Shawanda, 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 and Brother Rick Z. I don't like them at all. Whenever she sees me, she doesn't greet me. Listen, not greeting eh, can be so, you can pick so much offense or about not greeting. In the Bible, eh, <laughs> Mordecai was not greeting Haman. Haman will be passing by, everybody was expected to bow down. But Mordecai will not bow down. He said, Jesus, is, God is my, my Lord. It's only God I'll, I'll, I'll bow down to. And Haman noticed that Charlie, this guy, he doesn't bow down. Only one guy. Because only he says that he has a God. He's a, he's a Jew and his, his God is a God of all. And so he, he doesn't, he will not bow down to me. Haman took offense. Listen, and his, in, in his anger, he wanted to terminate all of Israel. All Israelites under the face of the, of the earth. Of one the person earth. had done something. And that's what happens. One person can do something to you in the church. Eh? One person can do something to you in the church. And then that's it. The you step out and you start criticizing, the whole saying thing. things about the church. This place, the church is whatever. And, and the more you start talking about such things, the more the devil gives you imaginations. More imagine. Even, even a hello. Hello is an insult in your head. Fake people. They are pretending. Hey! Hmm. Sit down for two minutes. You, it, it's not allowed. The moment you start getting into those things, you'll be surprised. Let me, let me show you a verse. Look at, look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians 11, sorry. Verse 29. First Corinthians eleven twenty nine. It says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily. He's talking about the communion. Okay? He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Eh? He's not talking about eating the communion and thinking that, oh, this is truly the body of Jesus Christ. That is also part. Okay? Or not unworthily does not mean that the person has done something wrong. Uh, maybe the person has gone to fornicate, whatever. Come and take the communion. That's what you need to help you. You need to, you need to take five. <laughs> you, know, you, need, you, need, you need to know that Christ died for your sin. You need, you need to know it. That's not what he's talking He's not talking about any of those things. Like, what are you? So whatever, you can't come and come and partake in the communion. Do you understand what are So you are a second wife, you are a third wife, whatever. Brother, you have, you have you are a side chick. Come and come and take, <laughs> partake of it. You need, you, need the, you need the communion to help you to renew your mind. That's what you need. Don't say that, oh, I've done this, I can't partake of it. No. It's a lost table. He invites us to it. It's a cup of blessing. You need the blessing. You need, you need to know about the blood of Jesus Christ. That speaks better things than the blood of Abel. You need to know that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks forgiveness that he has forgiven you. It speaks mercy. It speaks kindness. It speaks love. You need to know it. Are you getting it? But he's talking about drinking unworthily is in reference to not discerning the Lord's body. What is the Lord's body? The Lord's body is Jesus and the church. You need to understand that all of us are the body of Christ. We, we are the bread. We being many are one bread. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Christ is one body. All of us. For the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one. So also is Christ is many members. That's all of us. Are you in the church? Yeah. Then in first in Romans chapter twelve, he talks about us being even though we are many, we are one. We make up one bread. Can you help me with that verse? Yeah. So we many are one body in Christ, and everyone members one of us. This is Romans twelve verse five. It says, "Go go back, go back to verse four, so that we can understand it." For us, we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we be many, are one body in Christ, and everyone, mem everyone members one of another. Have you seen it? We are members of the body. We are all, the body of Christ is one. And the body of Christ is the bread that we partake of. Show me that verse. We be many, are one. 10, 17. 1 Corinthians 10, 17. Let's 
read this together. One to go. For we be many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Have you seen it? For we be many are one bread. We are all brodo. We are one brodo. A one, A one bread. Even though we are many, we are all one bread and one body. The body of Christ is the bread that we are partaking of. So when you take the communion, you are actually partaking of all of us. So you can be partaking of the communion and not like your brother or not like your sister. He says when you do that, when you, when you partake of the communion, not liking somebody, having an offense about someone with someone. It's the Corinthian church, eh? They were partaking of the communion, yet they were suing each other at court. Is it, is it, is, is there. They, take, they, take each, they were taking each other to court. Let me show it to you. Maybe, maybe you've never seen it. Very wicked. It's, it, you need a certain level of wickedness to be able to take your brother to court. Paul said that, don't you know that you shall judge the angels? Why are you taking each other to court? Can't you judge matters, simple matters? Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 6. There any of you having a matter against another. Let, let's read, um, what's it called? Uh, something like, uh, like NLT or something like that. When one of you has a dispute with, one, an, with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers? How dare you? The apostle was angry. What are you talking about? How dare you? Someone has done something again. Someone has taken your money and you are taking the person to court. I court. Oh. Oh. You are in the same church. Yes. Let me tell you a story. Yes. A certain country, that be, that's name, the name begins with a certain alphabet. Okay. In this country, you can sue anyhow. You see, if there's, you, it snows and you don't shovel the snow in front of your house, and someone passes in front of your house and slips, the person can sue you for damages. True story, I'm not joking with you. You can get $5 million right now. Yeah, so everybody is very careful. So this, this, this uh, pastor, you know, was in a, in part of a certain church. He was not the main, he was not the branch pastor, he was one of the pastors there. You know, he was driving his car out of the church, and he saw one of the church members who was going towards where he was going to. Then he said, oh, would you want me to take you? Then the person said, oh, yeah, why not? And the person sat into the, in, in his car. When he drove around the corner, another person brought his car and hit him, hit the car on the side of the passenger, the passenger side. Can you imagine that the, the one, the lady he picked, sued him for damages? Me that I've given you the lift. You see, and then she said that, the lady said that, I'm not actually, I'm suing the insurance company. Yeah. So she got, she did, she got, she got the money. She got the money. But what that means is that the insurance of the one who was driving the car, the pastor, will, very, will go very high. That's what it means. So in effect, the pastor is the one paying for the. They spoke to her. Listen, they, they had meetings with her. She said, no, she's going to sue this is the opportunity to cash out. She's struggling. This is the opportunity to cash out. It's a true story. True story. Yeah. A Christian took his, his, his pastor to court, church member. For not he, he, is the, he, was, he was not the one who caused the accident. To. Someone hit his car. Someone hit his car. Yeah. There any of you. <laughs> uh, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers verse 2 it says don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world and since you are going to judge the world can't you decide when these little things uh, even these little things among yourselves don't you realize that we will judge angels so we will judge the world we will judge angels so you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life have you seen it these guys were partaking in the communion and they were suing each other at court. They were partaking the communion, and they were quarreling. This, different groups with different whatever. Paul says, in, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let, let's read from verse 4. 
let's read from verse 1 so I can even understand it. Paul says, are you people serious at all? Dear, dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I, I would I would to spiritual people. I, I don't consider you guys spiritual. I had to talk as though you belong to this world and as though you were infants in the Christian life. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid, solid food, because you aren't ready for anything stronger. And you aren't ready. You, are still, you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another. In the church, oh, someone has dressed nicely. You can't say that, hey, your dress is looking nice, so I like it. Instead of saying, passing a good comment. Hey, why do you spend so much money on this dress? It's not nice like that. That boy bought it for you. Why can't you believe that she bought it herself? What is your problem? What, what is your problem? Some people don't like my message. I don't know why they, are. they, don't, like, they don't like my message. <laughs> we love it. Hey! hey! We love the message. Hey! Like, 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 like. Jealousy. Yeah. Eh? You are jealous of one another. Wow. Instead of, you see, you've seen your brother has bought a car. Yeah. And he's driving happily. Oh, yes, come on. Oh, yes, come on. Oh, yes, come on. Instead of being happy for him. And trusting God that you will get you will get some. You start saying bad things. Are you in a church that have gone home? You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Quarrels. One day I called some people to my office. I said, Listen, you've been quarreling for the last four years. Four years. They have been quarreling for four years. Four years. Four solid years. Fourth anniversary quarrel. And I, I, I told them that. I told them that. Listen, it's okay. It's okay. Cease fire. Forgive her. You to forgive him. Hug each other. Yeah. <laughs> Hug each other. Let, let's pray and then let's go home. Yeah. Sit down for two minutes. <laughs> you will see that the devil uses to block blessings, whatever. The blessings are not flowing. And you are wondering why. You can fast and pray. You are fasting and praying in the wrong place. You are, you are in the wrong place. Listen, if you are going to Kumase and you, you start your, your journey uh, on uh, the motorway, I say, my motorway. Okay, and you are, you are driving on top speed. Top speed. You have a V8. Your tank, your forward tank is full, and you even have uh, the reservoir is also full. And you are driving with top speed with a very good car. Where will you? Will you? When will you? Will you? You will get to Togo. I tell you. Before you realize you are in Benin. Fasting and prayer, eh, does not change your situation if you are on the wrong path. Walking in love is being on the, on the right path. Walking in unforgiveness and bitterness is being on the wrong path. No matter how much you fast and pray, you are still on the wrong path. You are going very quickly, very fast to the wrong, in the wrong direction. You are you're on the highway to nowhere. So don't joke with love. Love is the way to victory. Love is what? The way to victory. Is the way to victory. You need to walk in love. You need to stay in love. And the devil tries to get you out of love all the time. By one problem or the other. Someone will say something you didn't like. You need to, you need to forgive the person. Forgive. Or else we can't, we can't stay with each other. It's going to be a problem. Hallelujah. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11 where we're reading. Oh, okay. You let me finish this one. Go back. Let me finish this one. I think I have some time. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are giving me, you are giving me a vim. <laughs> hey! Eh? You are jealous of one another. You quarrel with each other. He says, doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? The people of the world who do those things. Next verse. 
When one of you say, I am a follower of Paul, and another says, I follow Apollos, aren't you acting just like people of the world? Then he says, after all, who is Apollos and who is Paul? And go to verse 6. Then he says, I apply to Apollos, Apollos watered, blah, blah. Go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. Verse 8. There's a place where he says that it is commonly reported, it has been reported to me. Which one is it? Look for it for me. 5 1. I can't, I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality. Paul is receiving reports going on among you. Something that even pagans don't do. I'm told that the man in your church is living in sin with a stepmother. He's sleeping with a stepmother. His father's wife. And he's partaking in communion with the father and the, wife, and the father's wife. Wickedness. Then there's another one. There's another one. It says, another, uh, it's been reported to me by the house of Chloe or something like that. Yes. 111. First Corinthians 111. Reports were coming. For some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels. Eh? Some members of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be angry when someone comes to report about your quarrels to your pastor. Don't be angry when someone comes to say that. You, you, they, and then you, these people, you don't talk to them. When you talk to them, that's it. They'll go and tell the pastor about your problem. They'll go and stop. Small thing, they'll go and talk to them. Hey! You are in the Bible. <laughs> hey! Listen, if, we are, if you realize that what we are talking about, you are inside, just smile, smile and wave. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. Look at look at First John three verse eleven. First John three eleven NLT. This is the message you heard you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Hmm? Next verse. We must not be like King, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. It's called the way of Cain. The way of Cain is the one who kills his brother. How do you kill your brother? You kill your brother by saying bad things about that person. You kill your brother by, by keeping bitterness in your heart and becoming wicked. But the bitterness makes you wicked with time. Yes. You say things that does not exist. Or things that have passed five years ago. You used to be saying it. So one, so one lady, someone just walked into the church. Okay, and then a lady approached the person after about two weeks of the person being in church. Then the person started giving, the lady started giving this new lady information about people. Yeah. Do you know this person? Oh. Yeah, he did this five years ago. He did this, he did that, he did that. This one too. This one, he slept with this one, slept with this one, and this one did this, and this one. Is. These people came together. They were, they, were married. they were a couple when they came. When they came, the pastor separated them and gave this one to this one, gave this one to this one. This one will break your heart. This one, the abortion. This one, he, he, he likes taking money from people when he's 22. Like, it's like you are playing record. Hey! Who hey. bought power? Uh, power. <laughs> you like my message? You don't like my message? Love it. Meanwhile, in Christ, the Bible says that in Christ there's neither, that, that, it says we know no man after the flesh. Oh, yeah. We know no man after the flesh. Do you see? I mean, what about it? The church is for perfecting people. Everybody here has one problem or the other, as I'm talking now. As I'm talking right now. Yeah. It's a hospital. We are all getting better. Why do you use an information that you have against somebody? Don't you know that you are, you are infecting the person with bitterness? You are like a poisonous wasp that is, is, is stinging the person. This is why you break your heart right now. Oh. <laughs> then you are talking plenty. Oh. Yes. You are spoiling a lot of things. The church cannot grow if it's like that. God doesn't like that. And you see, you open a huge door for the devil. You open a read a read final quest, you'll be surprised. These are the things that opens the doors for the devil. 
Hatred. Look up. We'll go back to that place. Verse John 3. We're reading verse 11. Eh? Why, and why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil. And his brother had been doing what was right. right righteous. Sometimes you, you, you notice that your brother is doing the right thing and you are not doing it. Right. And then it's like, oh, it's, it's nothing. You should go away. I am spiritual, spiritual. I'm not so like a very spiritual person, whatever. It's paining you. It's paining you that the guy is prayerful. Why don't you take inspiration rather than say foolish things? Oh. Painful. Yeah. Listen. Read the Bible. You read the Bible. Let the person help you. Go ahead, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. Go ahead, sit down. Look at the next verse 13. I want to finish you people, you don't let me finish. I've not done half of my messages. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue, let's continue. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you, verse 14, if we love our Christian brothers and sisters, it proves that we have passed from death to life. This is a proof of your Christianity. That's the truth. Yeah, someone has done something to you and you are able to forgive the person. Hey, you're fast. <laughs> now forgive you, Aquano. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It proves that we have passed from death to life. When you can easily forgive. When, check your forgiveness level. Yeah, we put it. Check it. That, that lets you know that you are growing in the Lord. Yeah. Love is a test of your maturity. And love is actually what God will be looking at at the end of all things. Did you, I loved you to the point that I died for you. Did you were you able to love your neighbor? The love as I have loved. That's what Jesus will be checking on. Nothing else. It's not whatever. I mean, loving each other. Not how much you prayed. How much you're able to walk in love. Yeah. Not fasting. How much you're able to walk in love. Hallelujah. But a person who has no love is still dead. Next verse. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. It's really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. It's telling you that, listen, hating somebody, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. You know what I'm talking yes. about. You can't forget something the person did five years ago, two years ago, six months ago. Eh? So fresh in your heart. You can't grow, your spiritual development is just is, is stalled. And the devil can do anything. You see, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, where we're reading, he says that because, of, because you don't discern the lost body, which is the, the body of Christ, and partake in the communion, he says that's why many of you are walking in sickness. Eh? For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or die. Because you, just because you don't discern that the body of Christ is made up of all these people. All the, all, we, are, we are all one body. So I must have the same love I have for this person, for this person. Yeah. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't like this person more than this person. I shouldn't love this person. No, we should all, the agape love of God, which, which is uncircumstantial love. It has nothing to do with circumstances. You see? Yeah, same love. That is why many of you are weak. Weak in your finances. Weak in your body. And sick. And some have even died. Why? Because you don't discern the lost body. You don't... You don't you think that it's just Jesus. How can you love the head and not love the body? It doesn't work. Please, let's be serious. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And the unfortunate thing is that it gives the devil access. He's winning the case. You are making him winning, win the case, your case. And, and it's like Jesus can't do much about it. Because you are, you are walking outside of love. You are walking in unforgiveness and hatred, which is his realm, his world. Even though you are born again, child of God, you are in his realm. You are walking around him. And whatever he wants to do, he can do to you. He can plague you with sickness. He can plague you with all kinds of things. You see, it's very important. Very, very important. In, in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, where, we're, where, we're, where we're, we're reading, look at 2 Corinthians 2, 11. Let's say should get an advantage of us. This particular verse is a verse concerning forgiveness. Go to the, go to the verse before. Verse 10. NLT, please. When you forgive this man, 
this, 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 this the man he's talking about is a guy who has slept with his father's, uh, his, the father's wife. That guy. Paul was so angry, he said they should remove him. Then later he wrote and said that they should bring him back. He should be part of the group. They should forgive him. Then he says, when you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Then he says that, so that Satan will not outsmart us. So that, because walking in unforgiveness makes Satan get an upper hand over you. He can outsmart you. Are you in the church? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Unforgiveness. So dangerous. Unforgiveness. It's very dangerous. Someone will hurt you. Someone will say what you, what you, don't, you don't want. It, it will happen. If you've not been offended yet in the church, it means that you are not close. You are not close. You are far. When you start getting close, something will happen. Something you, you be, something you don't know about. You'll be accused for something you don't know about. Yeah. Don't take it to heart. Forgive. One of our sisters, you know, someone came to say some things about her to me. Said that she has done an abortion for this guy and whatever. Then I called her. I said, ah, ah, this is what I'm being told. She said, me. The guy, the guy has not even seen my ties before. He has not even seen my ties before. Me, I've done an abortion for this guy. She was so sad. It broke her. Because she, she, was, she was trying to live for the Lord, whatever. And then someone, some people said, is this what they believe about me? I told her sister, cool down. Cool down. That's a, a lot of people believe wrong things about you. Don't mind them. Welcome to what? The new world. <laughs> I told her, don't worry. Don't worry. Just, even if it is true. And so what? And so what? And so what? And so what? Let's continue our lives. Oh? Yeah. You, you have, we have not seen your own. You are saying, you, that's why you can't talk. We have not seen your own. We have not seen your own. If, we will, if God wants to open our eyes to see your own, we will run away from you. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 23. Hmm. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, sorry, Matthew 18. Matthew 18, verse 25. All the way to verse 34. This is a story concerning the guy who owed his master so much, $10 billion. And then he met a, br a brother. He was forgiven by his master, by his Lord. Do you see? Because of how long it is, I will not read everything. And then when he met his brother, who owed him $20? Let's read the Amplified. The Amplified will show us the, the various amounts. This guy was owing, look at the next verse. He couldn't, he couldn't pay. So the attendant fell on his knees, begging him, have patience with me and I'll pay you everything. Verse 27. And his master's heart was moved with compassion. And he released him and forgave him, canceling the debt. He canceled the debt. said, it's okay. You are forgiven. And go back, go up to where he, the, they mentioned the amount. He says, when he began accounting, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents, probably about $10 million. The guy owed him about $10 million. And the master forgave him of all the $10 million. It's okay, you are forgiven. How many people can forgive $10 million? 100 Ghana safe. 100 Ghana is a problem. $10 million. Somebody cried because of some, somebody cried because someone was owing her 20 Ghana. Yeah. Someone cried because someone was owing her 20 Ghana and was not paying. This Lord forgave $10 million. Then this guy went out from the master's house. And as he was going, he saw a brother who was owing him, how much? $20, eh? $20. But the same attendant, this is verse 28, he went out, found his fellow attendant who owed him a hundred denarii, about $20. He caught him by truth. And he caught him by the throat and said, pay what you owe. Pay what you owe now. Next verse. So his fellow attendant fell down and begged him. Begged him. Oh. Endlessly. Give me time. Give me time. Give me time. I'll pay you all. Give me time. I'll pay you all. Chia. Look at what the guy did. Next verse. Look at the next verse. But he was unwilling and he went out and had him put in prison till he should pay the debt. He put him in prison. 
Twenty dollars. How can he pay? How can he pay? You are keeping in prison. How can he pay? That's what that's what happens when you, you are not forgiven. You keep people in prison in your heart. Whatever they do does not look nice for you. Yeah. You see, the unfortunate thing is that sometimes what they did is really painful. Very painful. You see, how can I tell you to forgive someone who raped you when you were a child? These are very sensitive things. How can you tell me that you forgive someone who raped me when I was a child? But listen, forgiving him is for your own benefit. If you don't forgive him, you will be put in prison at the end of the day. You are keeping in prison, you end up being put in prison. When you go down, you see that the guy was called back by his master. And he put in, the master put him in prison and said he should pay all the $10 million. The Bible says that he was given to the tormentors. Eh? This is verse 34. And in wrath, his master turned over to the torturers, the, torturers, the jailers, eh? so he should pay all that he owed. The, torture, the torturers and the jailers are demons. These are demons. Evil spirits. Unforgiveness puts you in, in the prison of torture. Torture of sickness. Of poverty. So some people are praying. Christians, we are praying for prosperity. They are declaring whatever, but they are not forgiving some people. They are holding on. Yes, what he did is painful. I'm not saying what he did is not painful. Though. I mean, I've had to forgive some people. I remember some many years ago. I went to a particular place to go and fast for three days to forgive some people. Because they were very close to me. And they had hurt me big time. They had punished me. They had been very wicked to me. And I, I was wondering how I was going to forgive them. Yeah. I went to this particular place to pray. As I was praying, I said that, God, I give, I give everything over to you. I forgive them. Now, I do those people good. I do, I heap goodness on them. Wow. Yeah, I heap goodness year upon year. Yeah, God has helped me forgive them to the point that I can be extremely good to them. Yeah. Extremely good to them. Receive grace to forgive all those who have offended you. Yeah. That guy broke your heart. Listen, if you don't, hold on, hold on, please. If you don't forgive him, eh, you'll be surprised that you will be, you'll be blind to notice the, the new one who is coming. You can't see the new one who is coming. Because you have not forgiven. The new guy will say hello. They had the old guy also said hello. And you say, I know this, I know this boy. I know this hello. I know this one. Meanwhile, this new guy is the best that God has designed for you. But you can't, you can't, you can't see. Yeah. My, wi my, wife, my wife had, she had a relationship before me. You know. Are you listening? She had a relationship before me. You know, and the guy was not good to her at all. And he came with a lot of things, a lot of issues. And one day she was praying, just telling God about how angry she was. And God told her to forgive. She's, she's around, she's at the back. She said that, when she forgave the guy, I think some few weeks later, I also showed up. I showed up. Hey! If she had not forgiven that, forgiven that guy, that would have, she would not have noticed me. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, forgive. Forgive. So that you are not given to the torturers. Eh? You don't want demons to have a few day in your life. What do you think? Tell neighbor, forgive. forgive. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Hebrews 12, verse 15. Let's read King James, right? To be simpler. This is very sensitive. It says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. You see, unforgiveness take, gives you away to the torturous and all of that. Unforgiveness here gives, makes you fail of the grace of God. The grace of God cannot work in your life. He says, look into danger, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Have you seen it? He says, root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Oh, you, you are not the only one who will be. You, you end up destroying a lot of things. Just because you are not happy about one thing or the other. Because you are hurt. You destroy a lot of things. You speak against people you are not supposed to speak against. Because you are hurt, because someone hurt you and then it spirals out of control. You see, I'm coming, I'm coming to show you something. Look at it. It says, looking diligent. The word looking diligently is episcopio. It's the it's it's same word as bishop, which means overseer. So he's saying that be an overseer, to take care, take care, oversee yourself. Make sure that 
you don't fail of the grace of God. Make sure of it, because you can fail of the grace of God. What does it mean to fail of the grace of God? To fail of the grace of God means that the grace, the favor of God cannot work in your life. Even when God is showering favor on you, it doesn't work. God is, there's an umbrella that is preventing all the favor from getting to you. Why? You are working in bitterness. You can't forgive. When that, when that thing, that person's thoughts of that person comes to your mind, no, no, no. Pastor's beating. Hypertension. Those, some of those things are from, are from those things. Yeah. You can think about something. And sometimes the person who is hurting is your husband. Very close to you. Or your wife. Very close to you. How, how do you deal with it? First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. First Peter 3 verse 7. Likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of, the, of life, so that your prayers be not hindered. He says, you don't want your prayers to be hindered. So deal with them as heirs of the grace of life. I mean, we are, we, are, we are one. We are one body in Christ. I will not allow you to prevent my prayers from being hindered. Hey, I'll forgive you very quickly. Very quickly. You're fast. You're fast with the forgiveness. Yeah. So that you can, you can have the grace of God. Work. I don't want the grace of God to fail in my life. Do you want the grace of God to fail in your life? It's like God can't help you. Can you imagine? Why can't God help you? Because you are not forgiving your brother. You have bitterness in your heart about somebody. Very wild. So the question is, how do I forgive? Let me show you how to forgive. So that you can practice it, okay? How do I forgive? Luke chapter 17, verse 3 to 6. Luke 17, 3 to 6. Likewise, ye husband, Luke 17, 20, 3 to 6. 3. 3. Jesus says, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Next verse. And if he trespass against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And the disciples couldn't believe it. Is it in another place, he records that 70 times seven, 490 times in a day. He says, forgive the guy. Eh? That's Matthew 18, 21. Look at Matthew 18, 21. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times. Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee, unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. And then look at what he said. Therefore, as the king of, okay, go back to the one in Luke. The one in Luke shows us the response of the disciples. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Lord, increase our faith. Because, you see, faith is linked to forgiveness. Yes, faith is linked to forgiveness. In the, in the Old Testament, there, they, in Amos chapter 1, verse 3, we see how the, the principle of forgiveness in the Old Testament, which the Pharisees were using, says, That says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and four, I will, re- I will not turn away the pun- I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have trash, trash Gilead with trash instruments of iron. Have you seen it? That says the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away. So it's like they, they were used to forgiving three times. When your brother does one, two, three, you forgive. But when he does the fourth one, that's it. You can return the punishment. That was what the, the, the Pharisees and the Jews knew. It's all over. You can read the whole chapter, you see it. It repeats itself so many times. But then Jesus comes and says that you should forgive your brother seven times 70. Hey! So they said, no, 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 Lord, increase our faith. We can't handle this. Then Jesus started talking. Look at, go, go back to that place. And the Lord says, so when he said, Lord, increase our faith, the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of master seed, you, shall, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the roots, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Jesus referred to the sycamine tree. The sycamine tree um, is a tree that was pollinated by a, a wasp, a certain wasp. Okay? The wasp will sting the flower. Okay? And then the, 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 it stings it with, in a, it with a certain kind of bitterness. And so the fruit is bitter. That's how you are offended. You're offended when someone stings you. And then bitterness comes in. 
you, you, you can't forgive. Something is going on with you. You are angry about one thing or the other. That's how the sycamine tree is, is pollinated. The sycamine tree has a very complex root structure. It is very difficult to remove it. You can cut it, but it will keep going because it has a very, 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 I don't know if you can show us a, a, a diagram of a sycamine tree. It's, it has a very complex root structure and it's very difficult to do it. And that's how bitterness too is. It's difficult to do bitterness. Sometimes it's like it's gone. Then when you see the person, it comes back again. Someone said, I can forget, but I can't forget. If you don't forget, the thing will keep, you will keep remembering and it will keep triggering the roots of bitterness. Are you in a church? Then the second mind also, the, the fruit of the second mind, okay, was eaten by poor people. The second mind was like a fig, fig the, the, it's like a fig tree, but the fig was eaten by rich people. The, the poor people could not afford the fig fruit, so they, they ate the second mind fruit. So the more you stay in poverty, the more, the, the more you stay in un, unforgiveness, the poorer you become. When you partake of the fruit of the second, you become poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. Poor, poorer, poorest. You just keep going. Apart from that, the second mine tree eh, could be used for coffin. It was the main tree for making, manufacturing coffin. As you stay in unforgiveness, it leads you to death. Unforgiveness leads you to death. So the second mine was the representation of unforgiveness. And Jesus said that, listen, if you have faith as a grain of mustard, you, shall, you might say unto this second mind tree, this bitterness, be that plucked up by the root and be that planted in the sea and it should, not obey, it should obey you. The sea, the sea is salty, right? Yeah. Anything that you put into the sea will die. No be so. Yeah. So Jesus was saying that if you, put, if, you tell, if you speak to bitterness, okay, by faith, you can remove it from your heart and it will be, it will be destroyed completely out of your life. Are you saying it? Yeah. So Jesus was talking about how faith can be used to remove bitterness. Faith is the, is the cure to bitterness and unforgiveness. By faith, you can remove bitterness and unforgiveness from your heart. Okay? So what do you do when you are offended about something and about someone? Number one, tell the bitterness to go away by faith. Say what the person has done and, for, and, and say, I, I remove this from my heart in Jesus' name. He did this to me. He ate my food. The food I, was, <laughs> I had planned for, he ate it. But I forgive him. Look at, look at the second mind tree. Look at how complex the roots are. It's very complex. Very, 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 very complex. It can be here and the roots are in another place. Yeah, Very complex. It's difficult to remove it. But the Bible says that you can use faith to remove it. So declare, it's very important though. Eh? Go to your room and say that I forgive this person. I cast out that particular offense, this particular offense. Whatever he, he or she did to me, I remove it in Jesus' name. You know, there was this couple. Can I again mention a, 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 a family in a church he pastored once? You know, and how that family was sick and poor all the time. After many years of preaching and whatever. They were, it wasn't working. Another family came to the church who were also having some problems. But then, before long, they were prospering. As the word was coming, they were prospering. As the word was coming, they were becoming better. They, they had gotten healed, everything. One of them had a very serious uh, uh, illness. And the pastor prayed, and within an instant, the illness left. But these people had been working with more complex illnesses. But they, were, they weren't getting healed. So, can you get decided to investigate? When he checked, he realized that this family, the family that was not having healing and all of that, they, they had difficult, they were not forgiving a lot of people. Their unforgiveness was preventing the word of God from working in them and allowing Satan to have access to them. But this new, this, this other family, when you do this, they, they just forgive. They forgive each other. This other family were even angry with each other. Oh. One problem, this angry with the husband, angry with the wife, angry with the child, angry with this, angry with that, all the time. Even though they are together, there is no joy. There is no peace. So they couldn't receive the blessings of God. The grace of God was failing in their lives. They were given over to tormentors. The power of God could not work. Why? Because of unforgiveness. So it's very, it's, very, it's very serious. So declare the word. I walk in love. 
I remove this from my heart in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Number two. What is point number one? Tell the bitterness to go by faith. Number two, pray for the one who hurt you. Pray for the person. Pray for the person. Hmm? If you notice the person, uh, it's not married. Pray for the person's marriage. The one who hurt you, pray for the person's, pray for his marriage. Yes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Matthew 5, 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your what? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. He didn't say, curse them. Or (laughs) kill them in prayer. Father, when I lift my hand, all those who have been, who have been, who, who don't like me, and who have not been good to me, I cock my gun. Cock, cock. Boom. Or a uh, 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 machine gun. Cook, 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 cook. I fire all of them. He says, he says that we should what? Love our enemies. We should pray for them. Do good to them. That's the next one. So do good to those who... Eh? Look at that. Look at that TPT. Do good to those who, are, who, who are, have offended you. TPT, Matthew 5, 44. You have TPT, my brother. Can you read this to me? Let's read it together. One to go. However, I say to you, love your enemies. Bless the one who curses you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you. And respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. Do something wonderful. Buy a gift for him. Who was seed into his life. There was one minister in a particular state in America who was being criticized by another. Criticizing every single thing on social media, everything. Yeah. Every preaching, he will analyze the preaching. He will not focus on his preaching. He will focus on the other person's preaching. Saying things about him, whatever. The preacher decided, the other preacher who was being criticized decided to do good to the other one. He started sponsoring his ministry. He would send money to his ministry every, every time. With anonymously. Send, blessing him. He didn't even, the one who was criticized didn't know that. He was the one. The one they decided to, because the amount was becoming bigger and bigger as time went. So he decided to find out who it was that had been doing that. And realized it was this guy who was criticizing. He changed. He, he knelt down and said he's sorry for all that he has been saying. Yeah. Yeah. Don't curse those who curse you. Eh? Tell me, but don't curse those who curse you. Don't curse those who curse you. It's not correct. Eh? He says we should bless those who curse us. Look at, look at Romans. Bless and curse not. Hmm? Romans chapter 12, verse 14. Can we read this together? One to go. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Have you seen it? Bless and curse not. The Bible says to overcome evil with good. Overcome those who are being evil to you with good. Why should you bless those who curse you? First Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrariwise, blessing. Knowing that you are there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. You have been called to inherit a blessing. So you shouldn't insult people when they insult you. Let's read um, TPT. First Peter 39. Have you been blessed? Yeah. Never retaliate when someone treats, 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 sorry, treats you wrongly. Never retaliate when someone treats you wrongly. Have you seen it? No, insult those who insult you. Can you do it? By the grace of God. But instead, respond by speaking a blessing over them. Respond by speaking a blessing over them. The person is cursing you, bless the person. Because a blessing is what God promised to give you. You are to inherit blessings, not curses. Don't be afraid that the curses will work in your life, so you need to also retaliate with the curse. No, God doesn't like that. 
bless and curse not. Do good to those who are evil to you. I think we need grace. That's why the disciple says, said, Lord, increase our faith. Rise up and thank God for what he has shared with you. Right now. So today, God is calling all kinds of people. He's calling all sinners. All slave queens. All scammers. All thieves. All adulterers. All good people. All Muslims. All Hindu, Hindus. You may be a Hindu. A Hindu. It's, it's a knowledge, but it's not the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And it's not good enough. It's not good enough. Your goodness is not good enough. Nicodemus needed to be saved. He's a good man, good Pharisee. But he came to Jesus at night in John chapter 3. And Jesus told him, except you be born again, you cannot. Except you be born again, you cannot enter. The only thing that qualifies you is to be born again. How do you, be born, how do you get born again? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and verse 10. He says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you believe with your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord of your life, you shall be saved. For whosoever calleth upon the Lord shall be saved. This morning, I want to stretch my hands out to you to help you. God has sent me to you. God is the one who has organized all this for you just because of you. Just because of you. So that you give your life to Christ. So that you start a new journey. So that you open your door, the door of your heart to Jesus. You open the door of your heart to Jesus. With every eye closed, I want to ask you to take a decision for Jesus today. He's knocking on the door of your hearts this morning. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is calling you. Maybe you're a scammer. You're a slave queen. Jesus died for you. Come to Jesus right now. Say these words after me. Thank you, God. I want you to say it loudly. Thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, as a proof of your love for me. Today, I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I believe with my heart that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and was buried. And I believe that on the third day, you raised him from the dead for me to be born again. Thank you, Father, that I'm born again today. I receive eternal life into my heart. From today, I am your child because of what you have said in your word. I believe with my heart and I've spoken with my mouth. Devil, you have no place in my life. I am for God now. I've been taken from darkness into life. I am for Jesus. I am for God all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me and for making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. What a blessing. Congratulations. Are you now that you're born again, get to us on WhatsApp 059 for our Christian literature designed to help you in this new life. Get full messages on YouTube at Bishop Isaac Oti Button. Let's get interactive. Bishop and Love Economy Church are everywhere. Scan this QR code or go to linktree forward slash Bishop Isaac to get access to all our social media handles. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, call 059 2222 695.